Okie dokie everyone. So um, now I'm going to make a card using the archival inks and some heat embossing techniques. Okay, so I have an idea in my head that, that I want to create like a stenciled background. Um, sprinkle it with some embossing powder to see where the powder would sit and then just melt the embossing powder. So um, as I mentioned in the first class, this stencil was very frustrating to me because it was cut a little skew. So whenever I wanted to position it, um, it felt like I was going absolutely crazy. So um, you can see me struggling here once again, trying to just match it up. Um, it's too small for the card base, you know, it's too big for a smaller application. So I just gave up and I decided, okay, you know what, I'm just going to do some over blending here. Now I mentioned in the other class that I don't like to use my blending foams for this. Um, but I also knew that I wanted to get the ink wet onto the card uh, base if that makes any sense so if you use the blending brush obviously you're brushing out to the wetness if that makes absolutely any sense and using the blending foam you will get more of the ink transferred to the paper now you can see that I simply randomly over blended there through the stencil with the three colors and then I removed the stencil and I covered it with as much gold embossing powder as I could I took the lid off and I simply Simply poured it over. I also counted to five to give the ink of the powder some chance to settle into any of the ink that would still be wet enough to grab the embossing powder. Now please remember that archival inks are not heat embossable um, as a rule okay but as you can see rules were meant to be broken and as long as you're happy with that kind of random look um, you will achieve a great result so I was very satisfied with that <clears throat> next up I decided that I needed to do a couple of sentiments and I wanted to check the quality of these stamps with some heat embossing. Okay, so I cut a couple of strips of paper um, that I was going to ink. And just to make 100% sure that the dies would actually be able to cut um, so that my pieces were not too small. So you can see in the previous video and here I'm using various craft sheets depending on which ones are in the wash, so to speak. And um, I also can't find them because once they dirty I don't know where I actually throw them I have all these little heaps where I put things so remember I said when we want to get um, a dark look we want to dry the ink first and then apply more ink um, I also know that with heat embossing if I sprinkle the powder I need my inks to be completely dry except for where I want the embossing powder to sit. Okay, so it's kind of imperative that I dry the backgrounds now. I will tell you that I did not dry those well enough. Um, I don't know if I kept that in the video, but when I actually poured the powder over, it was stuck everywhere. And it's also because I don't think I used my anti-static pad. So my bad, but... Um, yeah, anyway, that's the way it goes. So here, I'm actually trying to get the teal color, and I'm frustrated because I'm still using my blending foam. And I think it's with this one that I noticed the boo-boo, and I'm gonna throw that thing into the dustbin, okay? Um, and you can see where my fingerprints were when I actually pressed that ink into the ink pad. Now, that little bit of a dry with the heat tool did not dry that piece, okay? Um, <clears throat> and you would need to dry it a lot more because I actually saturated the whole piece of paper with the ink by pressing it into the ink pad. So I'm simply cutting these little sentiment blocks which makes it a lot easier for when you want to stamp um, over them and um, I'm going to do the third one as well but you will see that this one did not make the grade. Okay uh, but when you do cards you don't always know what's going to happen so it's a little bit of a randomness here and there okay so you can see there I'm kind of matching and seeing which sentiment to use 
and um, placing it onto my stamp block so I'm using the Tim Holtz set that I've had for a couple of years that has the grids on it um, which makes it really easy to line up I have actually gotten rid of most of my other stamp blocks because these are nice and flat and um, you know you can find them easily because they are not completely see-through <laughs> it's got the lines so um, as you get older you might have to invest in different tools um, yeah I've, I've actually noticed that so I'm going to be doing an experiment here with stamping the sentiment to make sure that I actually do get enough embossable ink on it. Now I'm using my stamp mat, but my stamp mat has seen better days. It's over 10 years old. It's been used as a piercing tool. It's been used in classes. Um, so it's not completely smooth anymore. And I realized that I would have to invest in a new one. Okay, so I'm lining up all my little sentiment blocks here. And you can see that I did not use my anti-static pad. Um, I was very sorry that I didn't but anyway that's these things happen so as I poured that powder over and you can see that I left it there um, the powder actually sat everywhere um, yeah you'll see now when I lift <coughs> the little the, the blocks and I actually remove the powder you will see where that powder actually got stuck everywhere now, I wanted to do a little experiment and see how quickly the um, ink dries the 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 archival ink if I could emboss that but that was a complete failure okay so archival ink really does not emboss but can you see that can you see that one that's a dud and it's because it's completely wet still and there all the ink um, dried too quickly and the powder did not sit at all but I was very satisfied with the way that this one came out as well as the dark blue one okay you can see there how beautifully it is actually melting and embossing so i think that the dark blue stands out more with the gold heat um, heat embossing and i think that that looks really really lovely um, but like i said it's always good to make a couple while you've got embossing powder out because it is a messy product and those fine little granules they tend to end up everywhere so I pretty much have to wash my craft space because if I don't, I will find embossing powder all over. So I'm folding my card base and I decided that I'm going to use that topper as is. And I'm just, as I did in the previous class, I'm inking the edges just to kind of accentuate the beautiful gold stencil work with the inks. And I don't know if you guys can notice, but you hardly see the randomness and it, it, it forms a whole, like a complete unit, even though it's not perfect stenciling. Okay, the eye actually deceives us. Um, into thinking it's looking at a unit because can you see there that the the gold is kind of pulling it together and that is the focal point of the card um, so I'm using foam tape once again to mount my sentiment looking for some flowers through my flower box seeing what I can come up with here um, now normally I would leave my adhesive to become repositionable so that it's very tacky but um, I just plopped it down there because I do think that that's a good spot for that pretty flower that is actually a really nice flower um, cutting some leaves again from that um, fussy cut sheet also the Tombow is repositionable for quite some time or it stays wet for quite some time um, which means that I can move my elements around also because the embossing powder makes it kind of a coated surface you even have a, a longer open time than what you would have if um, if it was just onto normal paper I have to be very honest with you guys I have tried a myriad of other adhesives I do like some of the new Katia Creations adhesives but Tombow is still by far my absolute favorite. Okay, so I'm backing this onto a little bit of thin chipboard once again, just to give it some solidity. 
and um, here I'm using the stencil packing because that other piece was way too small. Remember that paper is not meant for heat and water. So obviously the ink is the liquid part and then the heat with the heat embossing is um, the heat part. So I'm just using a typing paper there just to make sure that I don't get any nasty finger marks onto my beautiful card. Um, placing it onto the card base. Once again, pressing it down nicely with that piece of typing paper. I think that was my heat embossing paper, um, but it worked out fine. And there's the finished card. I hope you enjoyed this little bonus class and I will see you next time.